How's it going with the latest Paper Mario game out, and it's a series I am a very big fan of. I wanted to make a tier list of all the games. Figured it'd be a fun way to rank all these games, games I am very passionate about. So let's get right into it. And what's great is our first two on the list are very easy to put on there. That's right, S tier all the way. This series got out to the right foot, and left foot as well, as those two games were absolutely amazing. The rich Paper Mario keeps the story simple. Bowser steals a Star Rod and traps the seven Star Spirits all across the land while kidnapping Peach. Mario must go save all said star spirits, and then fight Bowser to 1. Save Peach, and 2. Get the Star Rod back and save the day. The gameplay in this is absolutely amazing. All the chapters they created, the levels you have to traverse, are some of the best I've ever experienced. I'll always have fond memories of Shiver City and the Crystal Palace. They'll always be one of my favorite levels, and probably one of the most memorable levels I'll ever play in my life. The combat too is fairly simple for an RPG, yet can be so dynamic which makes it terrific. You choose from a range of badges to see what attacks Mario has in combat, or what stats he can possibly boost. Pick the right badges and you can take advantage of whatever monster you're facing. Also feel free to increase your flower power, which gives you more capacity to use better attacks. As well as you also get help from the Star Spirits to launch some very powerful attacks. What I do like about this too is all the numbers are relatively simple and low, so these battles don't take forever trying to mindlessly grind through some weird tech you developed. No, you just go fight them with a very still dynamic badge system. Most RPGs go overboard. Paper Mario is one of the few RPGs that's still alive on the Titanic. Who cares if that ship sunk? Paper Mario is dominating on it. Then the Thousand Year Door came out and it only added to this game. The structure pretty much remains the same, but they had so many great new additions. You have a range of paper moves you just got to help explore the world, which includes turning into a paper airplane. The battles now have an audience, which you can also kick them out of the crowd in case they're being a complete douchebag. And once again, the chapter is some of the best levels I've ever played in a video game. Have a naval battle in Key All Key, ride a luxurious express, and the Glitz Pit might be the best level in all Paper Mario, and quite frankly, one of the best levels I've ever played. While I can't say I remember as it was a while ago, I'm pretty confident these first two Paper Mario games are the reason I got my first bone. Definitely S tier right here. The list got insanely hard when I had to come across Super Paper Mario, the Wii version of this game that came out in 2007. I even joked about why I didn't know where to put him in my Origami King videos, where he's just sitting in the middle of this little chart I created. So instead of debating it forever, I just slapped his ass in the C tier. The game does an odd thing where you go from a 2D Mario game to a 3D game. A gimmick that makes it so this really isn't much of an RPG. You know, it's still fun, but it isn't the same. The partners are these lazily drawn emotional things that give you basic attacks. Not all that special. You can play now as four characters, which is neat. I will give a lot of credit to Chapter 7 in this game. It is super fun. You start in hell and go all the way up to heaven. Which also is pretty damn dark. And the game highlight has to be the story. First, Bowser and Peach are married to create the Chaos Heart, but then it is stopped by the internal love of Count Black and Tippi. Or TP. I don't know, it's a little butterfly thing that keeps falling around. Fun to play, but not a league game. It feels like a C-tier game. Now it is time for... We do not speak his name. To enter the F-tier without a second thought. I was happy to hear this game was going to return the 3DS to the base combat it once was in the original two games. But good lord, it turned back in the worst possible way. You collect stickers and use those as attacks. So the only tactic is to really get good stickers. Boss fights are the worst too because you have to get the good specific sticker to beat that boss, which is usually hidden in some really stupid spot on the level. For how good the levels were in the first two games, these are so bland and unimagined chapters they come up with. Like, one of the dumbest decisions in my life, in a life full of dumb decisions, was playing this game to the end. Before we get going forward in the list, what do we do about these bonus games? Does games like Mario & Luigi Paper Jam and maybe fan-made games like Paper Mario 3D Land count? I don't know if I include these on the list, I'll, I'll say the Mario & Luigi games are pretty fun. Although Paper Jam might have been one of the weaker ones. I never actually played the fan-made game, but it looks pretty cool too. I don't know where the fuck they're gonna go, let's just put their asses over here. Oh, they're looking nice. They look nice over here. Color Splash is up next, and let's paint a spot in the D tier for this game. And what sucks about it is Color Splash has much better worlds and much more passionate gameplay to it than its predecessor. Store was definitely improved from the game that should not be named, but goddammit they went back to using collectibles as your battle system, and this time in card form. It tries to actually get experience back involved again by when you beat enemies you get paint and you can use paint to color your cards. But quite frankly, none of this means shit because once again there's all these OP items you can find all around and use them to dominate in the game. Color Splash deserves better, but it for sure is a D tier game. It's nothing better than that. So at this point most people were probably wondering where Paper Mario the Origami King would go with the brand new game that just came out. And I was asked this question from the beginning. Is it going to be on the good side or the bad side? Drum roll please. That's right, Paper Mario's back. The levels are designed so damn well. 
The story too is probably one of the better ones in the series. The characters have that witty humor to them that this series has thrived on. And they went to a ring based puzzle battle system. Which I'll be honest, it's not complete garbage. It's kind of neat to solve puzzles and this time instead of having wasting all these stickers and carts, you have weapons you can at least try to be a little more tactical in using. I mean sure the weapons are collectibles but it's not the main point of these fights. And well yeah you get no XP, you do get a ton of money from each of these fights. Which money is vital if you want to beat this game. Especially if you're trying to 100% it. Origami King was just a fun experience to play through, and while it, I can't say it's up with the big boys, it definitely tells me the series is not dead. And that gives me a lot of hope. So I gotta say, this was a fun tier list to make of a video game series I'm quite passionate about. Let me know what you guys think, and if you say I'm wrong, I will hunt you down in your sleep.